lesson. Good morning to everybody. There's a saying that I uh, always say that uh, you don't have to know where you are going if you know whom you are following. And the song, Anywhere with Jesus, as long as we are following Jesus Christ, then we don't have to know where we are going because we know that we are going in a better place. Right? So will you go where Jesus will go? Will you go anywhere with Jesus Christ? Of course, of course. Again, a pleasant good morning to everybody. Now, may I hear from this side, if you are blessed with God, can I hear an amen? As we call it in Tagalog, mahina. And can I hear from this side, if you are blessed by God, can I hear an amen? Amen! Woo! Malakas, loud. Again, can I hear from this side, if you are blessed with God, can I hear an amen? Amen! How about this side? Can I hear an amen? Amen! All right. Now everybody, if you are blessed by God every day, can I hear an amen? Amen! Wow. All right. Thank you. And uh, we know, and I know that uh, we are blessed with God every day. The moment and every time I'm here, I see all your smiling faces. It brings happiness actually to me. And I'm blessed to be with everybody today. And um, again, as I have said and I ask, and I see that uh, you see yourself blessed by God. And uh, if you ask, the majority of people, if they see themselves as blessed by God, they will say, yes, they are blessed by God. But when you change the question, you change it to, do you see yourself blessed by God every day? Now, the answer will be different. Majority now will say, no, I don't see myself blessed every day, but I am blessed by God but not every day. Okay. And some survey had it 50-50. Okay. But when you ask again, do you see yourself blessed by God? Majority would say yes. But again, if you will ask, do you see yourself blessed every day? The majority will say no. Do you see the difference? Do you see the difference? Okay, now. Now, why... The change in the answer. Why the change in the answer? Because number one, blessings are subjective. Or blessings are subjective. And what do I mean by that? People will have their own definition of what blessing is all about. Okay? And what blessing means and what mean what it means to be blessed by God. Now, if we are going to look at the definition of the word blessing in the dictionary according to, well, this is our title for today, Count Your Blessings, Are You Blessed? According to Miriam Webster, blessing, a thing conducive to happiness or welfare. A thing conducive to happiness or welfare. Now, if nothing significant you know, happens to a person that day that leads to a state of so-called happiness, then that person may not feel that he is blessed by God for that day because nothing significant happens. Okay? But if something is significant happens to him on that day, maybe he was given a salary raise. You know, maybe he was promoted. You know, then that person will say, well, I'm blessed today. Okay? Now, if we look at that perspective, the definition actually is correct. A thing conducive to happiness. It made that person happy. So that means that person was blessed by God. So somehow it is correct. And we can come now to the conclusion that blessing is pretty much subjective. 
based on the premise. The premise and then the conclusion. Okay. Now, um, I want you to have that thought in your mind, lingering in your mind, floating in your mind for a while, because we will get back to that. Now, after the onslaught of COVID-19 subsided, you know, I, I, I heard people saying that, you know, I'm, I'm so blessed. We are so blessed because we are alive. Hmm. And get me thinking, just a thought, actually. Does that mean the people who died were not? You get the point. Okay. Now, I will let you answer that in your own based on the truths that we will that will be revealed to us this very morning. Okay. Now, blessed or blessed, as many people define it, means having their desires met. That's actually what blessed means. Again, being blessed by God is something that is subjective. And we define blessings with when our desires are met by God. Now, normally, this would mean financial success. This would mean comfortable living. This would mean material ownership. Those are the three. Those are the primary, the three primary reasons why a person will say that he is blessed by God. Okay? Now, the question now is, how much financial success you need to amass to say that you are blessed? Again, it is subjective based on your different perspective. I would say probably on my own, well, probably a million dollars in the bank. Now, the other person would say, no, I would say 10 million. So that is again subjective, right? So the other thing is, what does comfortable living mean? Again, it is subjective to different person, right? And what about the third one, material possessions, okay? How many of it you need to own or to possess to say that you are blessed by God? If I only have one car, I am blessed. Oh no, the other person would say no. If I have five cars, then I am blessed by God. So again, being blessed, having material possessions, again, it is subjective based on our own definition of what subjective means or what blessed means, sorry. Okay? So there is no standard actually. Did you get the point? There is no standard. Now, the standard would be as long as their desires are met. That is the standard. If my desires are met, then I am blessed by God. If for me, having financial success means having one million in the bank, then if God, or if that one million in the bank was met, then I am blessed. I don't know about you, but I am blessed. You see? So blessing, blessedness now the definition becomes if our desires are met. Okay. Now, if being blessed means financial success, if being blessed means having a, a living a living comfortably, being blessed means having ownership, material ownership, then Jesus Christ would not fall in the category of being blessed. You get the point? Then, he is not blessed. Okay? If that's how people look at blessedness means from our own perspective, then I pity my Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus had none of those. Right? Well, he had money but not the kind of money that we are referring to as financially successful. Okay? And uh, he slept in houses, not his own. And sometimes he slept under the shade of trees. Okay? 
And he had no servants. He had no maids. And also, he was constantly persecuted. The same time, he did not live a comfortable living. He was constantly persecuted. He had no material possessions like you and I. Okay? But just maybe a few clothing and probably his sandals. Okay? That's about it. Okay? He had none of the material possessions, the material ownership that you and I have. Okay? Now, Jesus, he lived through the uh, generosity of other people. Now, having said that, from man's perspective, blessedness naturally means the occurrence of circumstances that favor a person and make them happy. So that now becomes the meaning of the word being blessed or blessedness. Now, let me tell you the meaning of the word blessing in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And the difference between being blessed and being happy, so that we may know what it is, what is meant to be blessed by God and what is meant to be happy. In the Old Testament, blessing, it means barak or barak okay, in the Hebrew word, meaning to kneel, to praise, to bless, uttered words of blessing, to give favor, okay? and give something, something that is tangible. So that is the meaning of the word blessing in the Old Testament. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 22, when God created the great sea monsters and every living creature, in verse 22, God blessed them. God uttered a word of blessing to them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. In Genesis 24, verse 35, the other meaning of blessing, the Lord has greatly blessed my master so that he has become rich. So, Barak not only means the utterance of words, but also giving favor, giving material blessings, tangible things. Okay? Like in this case. Now, the counterpart of the word blessing in the New Testament is what we call eulogia. That is where we get our English term, eulogy. Okay? In the New Testament, blessing, the counterpart of Barak, is eulogia. To praise, adulation, blessing, to utter, gift, to give gift that is tangible. In James chapter 3, verse 10, from the same mouth come blessing, utterance of words, praise. So that is the meaning of blessing. And also giving of gifts. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Now, on the other hand, happy or happiness in the Old Testament, the word is usher or esher. It means a state of being. A state of being. In Psalm chapter 1, verse 1, happy is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. A state of being happy, joyful, the feeling, a state of being, that is what is meant by the word happy. Now, in the New Testament, happy is makarios, a state of being as well. Acts 26 verse 2, Paul said, I think myself happy. I am in a state of being happy according to Apostle Paul, when he talked to King Agrippa. Now, the reason that I gave these definitions is so we know the difference between what, is, what it is to be blessed and what it is to be happy. Happiness and blessedness. Though in our English language, those two were or are uh, uh, you often used interchangeably. You know. But in the context of the Bible usage, they are actually different. Right? They are different. Okay? Again, happiness is a state of being. When you hear something funny, you laugh. You feel happy. Okay? When you go to your uh, 
to a place, what I call your happy place, you feel happy. My happy place is when I, when I go to the trip store, the trip shop. That is my happy place. <laughs> Brother Pete knows about it. I always go to the uh, trip store, just browsing and window shopping, trying to buy some windows. Oh, so that is my happy place. So I am happy. To be here, I am happy. A state of being. That's what happiness is all about. Okay? Now, on the other hand, blessed means receiving favor. Through what? Through something that is tangible. Tangible means something that is seen, gifts, okay? or something that is intangible. What is intangible? Those things that cannot be seen, like your utterance, your good praises, those are intangible things, like love. That is intangible. So those are blessings. So blessings are intangible and intangible. That is conducive to happiness or well-being. All right? So that is the meaning of blessed. Now, in Psalm 112, verses 1 and 2, we see two words in, uh, highlighted in red, the word blessed. Praise the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who find great delight in His commands. Their children will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Now, those two words are actually different from one another, although in our English term, it uses the word blessed. The first blessed means usher, happy, state of being. So, praise the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Happy are those. If you read the other translations, it uses the word happy or joyful. But the other blessed, it means Blessings. It means tangible things. Being conferred with blessings. So it means now those who fear the Lord are happy. They are joyful in a state of being because God will give them blessings. Barak. Okay. So happy and blessed are not always the same thing. Okay. So now we know the difference between what it is to be happy and what it is to be blessed by God. Here is a thought. A person who is happy always considers himself blessed. But a blessed person isn't always happy. What do you think? True or false? Or trolls? Now, actually it is true. It is true. Why? As I said earlier, we define blessings differently, subjective. Okay? Now, it is normally, being blessed is normally based on the happenings of our desires. Okay? That is how people define what uh, to be blessed means, the happening of their desires. Now, again, are you blessed by God? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Do you consider yourself blessed every day? Yes. Yes. Are you happy? Yes. Amen. Amen. Now, as we all say that we are blessed by God every day because God wakes us up every day. He gives provisions for you and I every day. But you see, somehow, many people are not happy because they don't see being uh, alive every morning, being given by God the provisions every day. They don't see it as a blessing. Okay? The reason why many people are not happy despite being blessed by God every day like you and I, is that people don't see these things as really blessings. Why? Because they don't see these things as significant to their life. Because for them, it is just a normal 
occurrence. It is just a normal occurrence. For them, it is not something to be desired. Why? Again, if you will ask the definition of how it is to be, to be blessed by God, now you will find those three things. Financial success, material ownership, and living a comfortable living. Those three. But they are not mindful that every time that God wakes them up in the morning, they are blessed by God. They are not mindful that the air they breathe is a blessing from God. My dear brethren and friends, we must be mindful of all the things that are happening to us. We must be mindful every day that God, when God wakes us up, we must be mindful that we are so blessed by God. Why? Because there are other people that do not have the opportunity, the luxury, I would say, to be alive. Do you know that in every three or five seconds, there are people dying. There are one people dying now. Another people die now. One, two, three. Another people. Another person. Every three to five seconds, one person is dying in this world. See? But we are blessed because one, two, three, four, five. We are alive. One, two, three, four, five. We are alive. Now, do you see yourself really blessed by God? Amen? Amen. Many people don't see it that way. Don't see it that way. Now, again, I, I keep telling people, can you count your blessings from God? Can you name it one by one? You know, and people, you see, People are blessed by God, but they are not happy. Get the point? You get the point? The problem with why we don't see God's blessing is that we change the definition of God, what it is to be blessed by God. We change the definition of what blessing means to confer to our own definition because there is something that we want to add in that definition, and that is the meeting of my desire. And that's not how God defines what blessing is all about. See? Now, another reason why we don't see God's blessing is because we add the conjunction if to our definition of what blessing is all about. You know, I am blessed if. I am happy if. See, we add this, con this little con conjunction of the word if. It becomes now conditional. Now, being blessed by God, it now becomes circumstantial to the happening of what you desire. It is now based on you. You now put yourself in the, uh, the, the shoe of God. You now become God yourself. Because you want now God to follow your own definition of what it is to be blessed and not follow what his definition of blessing is. Because for you, being uh, awake every morning, being alive every morning is not truly a blessing. Because for you, for many people, for me, blessing is financial success, living comfortable life, and having many ownership under my name. Those are the normal answer by many people. Okay. So now we put our own definition to what God defines as blessing. So again, it becomes circumstantial to the happening of our if. Okay. Again, going through what blessing means in the Bible, we say that blessing now means receiving favor through something intangible or tangible that is conducive to happiness or well-being. The air that you breathe, 
That is for your well-being. That is a blessing. Every time that you wake up, for your well-being, you are blessed by God. So now, we change now the definition of the word blessing to what God, or to what how God defined what blessing is all about. Now, intangible. When God blessed His creation after they were created, the other word of blessing, that is intangible. When God, John 3.16, for God so loved the world, the love that is intangible. When somebody prayed for you, every time we flash the names of those prayer requests, when we pray for that person, those are intangible blessings. Okay. When God gives you your life every day, now that becomes tangible. That is blessing. When somebody gives you something, that is tangible. That is blessings. So those are blessings. Those are for happiness, for our happiness, and for our well-being or welfare. Now, somehow the definition now of Webster is correct. It is conducive for happiness and for well-being. But oftentimes, we don't see these blessings again. But it is God's blessings for us to survive. And the other reason why we, didn't, we don't see this God's blessing in us because we look at the other people's blessing. We look at other people and compare what they have to what you don't have. And that becomes a problem. When you look at the blessings of other people and compare it to you, now you will say, they are so blessed, I am not. Because they are enjoying what you are not enjoying. Because they have what you don't have. Now you will say, good for them, they are blessed, but I am not. But really, are you not blessed by God? The problem is, don't look at other people and compare what you have with what you have. When you do that, you deny God of His glory. You deny God what is for His glory. You rob God of His praise that you should be praising Him and taking Him every day, but no, because you look at other people now you deny God of the blessings that, he, that every day He gives to you. Your gratitude will no longer be there because you look at other people's blessings and say that they are blessed and you are not. Now, there are many factors, again, why we don't have what others have. Why we don't enjoy what others enjoy. But it doesn't mean that you and I are not blessed by God. Now, we will see God's blessings at work. Fixed blessings. What do I mean by fixed blessings? In our scripture reading, thank you, Brother Alex, particularly Matthew chapter 5, verse 45, that you may be children of your Father in heaven, he causes his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Now, the context of this verse is about loving our enemies. When Jesus mentioned this verse, he was bringing their attention okay, to one of the means of the livelihood, livelihood of the people that he was talking to. Their livelihood, they're normally fishers, fishing, and also the other one is agriculture. And Jesus draw their attention to this, okay, to illustrate the love of God. And he said he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Now, just like my father, uh, he was a, uh, a farmer before in the province, in agriculture. Now, in agriculture, Good weather is very important. A good mix of sun and good mix of sun and the rain. Okay. 
Too much rain is not good. Too much sun is also not good. Those are a, a recipe for disaster if you are in the agriculture. Now, regardless of the farmer's disposition in, 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 in this particular verse, his disposition towards God, whether he hates God or he loves God, righteous or unrighteous, Jesus said, God gives sunshine to both the righteous farmer and the unrighteous farmer in equal portions. Okay? Now, these are fixed blessings. These are what I call fixed blessings. Even, even if your neighbor, if we will say that your neighbor is a sinner, is unrighteous, not a Christian, he is blessed by God, just like you are. In equal proportion. Okay. When, when God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, it is for everybody. Okay. Whether you, be, you call yourself righteous or you call yourself unrighteous, Jesus is for both of you. Fixed blessings. He gave it to everybody in equal proportion. Okay. Those are fixed blessings. The air that you breathe, fixed blessings. Equal proportion. The time that we have, 24 hours, 7 days a week, 60 minutes an hour, equal portion. Those are fixed blessings by God. Now, somehow, and this talks about God's love. And God's love will somehow motivate that unrighteous farmer to go back to God and to love God. Now, remember the parable of the prodigal son. Right? The father continued to love his son despite of the, the, the son rebelled against him. Okay? So love speaks blessings. It's for everybody. God makes no distinction between the righteous and the unrighteous. He gives it to everybody. Okay? He gives good gifts to both the unrighteous and the righteous. Now the verse clearly states that God's blessings befalls Everybody, be you a good person or an evil person. Now, somehow, here is the thing with this verse. Somehow, people find fault, particularly in this verse, thinking that those who saw evil should not be given favor by God. They should not be given by blessings of God because they are evil. Now, again, our mindset, we define. We define what blessings should be. Okay? And that is wrong. Okay? God will give blessings even if you are righteous or even if you are unrighteous based on the sovereignty of God. He bless whether you hate Him or whether you love Him. The general blessings of God will be given to everybody. And that is God's prerogative. And that is God's character. He is loving and He is fair to everybody. Because every one of us, the righteous and the unrighteous, were all, were all created by God. And again, that is part of His sovereignty. But of course, in the afterlife, that will be a different story. Because that is the justice of God. And that will be a, another character of God which is he is a God of justice. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. As his divine power has given to us all things, all things that pertain to life and godliness. If we look at this verse very carefully, God provided all that we need to live. All that you need to live that pertains to life. He provided everything. If you will notice in the creation, God created everything first before he created man. God puts everything in order before God created man. Because God will provide or provide first all that man need to survive. Okay. Again, those are fixed blessings. Water, vegetation, the air, and meat of all sorts. God provided those things. Those are fixed blessings. 
Okay, these are the things that generally do not depend on us for their multiplication. Now, can you name something that you need for your survival that God has not provided? None. I cannot think of something. Okay? Because God provided me everything that I need. And we can be assured but by knowing that there is nothing that we need to survive that God has not provided or will not provide for us. Also, it says for godliness. For godliness. All these blessings that you and I received from God were meant you know, for us to see the goodness of God and were meant for us to come back to God, go back to God, and should direct our path towards godliness. All the blessings, it must remind us of God's unconditional love to everybody. Now, um, again, as we can see by God's definition of blessing, none of us should say that he is not blessed by God. But again, somehow, we are so blind to see the blessings of God. We don't see these blessings and we turn to our wicked ways. Variable blessings. Now, variable blessings, it varies. Your work put out or put in equals your blessing. Okay. Now, as I said, said a while ago, the other reason why we don't see the blessings of God and why we don't see ourselves blessed is because we look at other people's blessings. Okay. Why they have what they have and why you don't have. Now, probably because you are not doing enough work. If you are lazy, then therefore, you will be poor. Hard workers get rich. Okay. Do you know what is another fixed blessings that God has given us? Talent, abilities. Again, as I've told you, God gave us everything. Fish, chicken, all, all meats, vegetables. But God also gave you talent, fixed blessings. Now, use your fixed blessings, use your talent to survive. Remember when God, you know, uh, said to Adam and Eve, you can eat anything except. Okay. Now, what is now the role of Adam and Eve? They have something to do. They have to prepare their food. God did not spoon feed them. No. Same thing to us. We have all that we need. So therefore, in order for you to eat, you must learn to use your God-given abilities to cook a sumptuous meal. You have to work. You have to work. The Bible said, lazy people are soon poor. Probably the reason why you don't have what they have is because you are lazy. See? Variable blessings. If you put more work, then more blessings. Variable. Okay. If you do overtime, more overtime, then you have more pay, right? Variable. If you don't do overtime, then you will only have your basic pay. And now you will ask, how come that person have more money than I am? But I have. And because he's always doing overtime. Variable. It varies. You get the point? It varies. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. Remember this. A farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. The same economic principle of the Old Testament to the New Testament and to us now. If you do more work, then more blessings will come your way. Apostle Paul said, a farmer who plants only a few don't expect to get more. You will only have few. But if you plant more generously, then you will have generous blessings. You will have more blessings. Okay. So, the reason why okay, you don't have what you have is because probably you put no work in it. If you put more work, 
then you will have more. If you put less work, then you will have less. If you put no work, then you will have none. Logic, right? Variable. Now we also have special blessings. We have fixed blessings, we have variable blessings, we have special blessings. James 4, 6, that is why the scripture says, God opposes the proud but shows favor, shows grace, gives grace to the humble. You see, there is a special blessing for the righteous individuals. God said, there will be favor for them. Now you will say, I thought, Brother Mike, God does not show favoritism. Yeah, I didn't say favoritism. I said favor. Favoritism is different from favor. Favoritism, giving preferential or unfair treatment to one group at the expense of another. Favor is approval of something or an act of kindness beyond what is due. God does not show favoritism, but he shows favor. Totally different in meaning. And he is always just. God is a just God. The rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are justice. He is just and upright is he. That is God's character. If he wants to show favor to you, then I don't have to question that because that is God's sovereignty. That is God's prerogative. We cannot question his authority. He is God. We are not. His judgment, he is always right, always fair. If God favors someone, then I don't have to question God because I am his creation. Matthew 21, 22, and whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. You see, special blessing. But of course, it doesn't mean that you have to demand from God. Matthew 21, 22 is not a badge of honor that we can now demand from God. No, it has to be with faith and it has to be in humility and in God's time. Okay? The Lord will not let the godly go hungry, but he refuses to satisfy the craving of the wicked. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. If you are a true children of God, you will not worry. A special blessings because God will take care of you. Remember during COVID, the onset of COVID, I remember back home. Many people are worried. Many people, you know, texting, messaging, asking for prayers because they are worried. Okay, I pray for them, we pray for them. But you know what? I told my family, don't worry. Why? And I read them this verse. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 3. And this is what I uh, hang on to. Always. God said, the Lord will not let the godly go hungry. I told my family, the Lord will not let us hungry. Why? Because His words say so. And I hold on to that word. And Psalm 37, verse 25. Now, going back. Proverbs Solomon, Psalm, David, father and son. Now David, the father, said, I once was young and now am old, yet never have I seen the righteous abandoned or children begging for bread or begging for food. I told my family about this. Never worry. Never. I have that pride of being proud. Why? Because I have God. Seriously, I have God. I told them, David said, and his son said, David said, I was, was young and now I am old. Yet I have never seen the righteous abandoned by God. Nor their children begging for food. The Lord will take care of you. Can I hear an amen? The Lord will take care of you. No matter what. You are blessed by God beyond measure. Amen. Hold on to the word of God. Finally, the ultimate blessings. 
In Malachi chapter 3, 14 and 18, you have said it is futile to serve God. What do we gain? But now we call the arrogant blessed. Certainly, evil doers prosper. And even when they put God to the test, they get away with it. Then those who fear the Lord talk with each other. The Lord listened and heard. A scroll of remembrance was written in his presence concerning those who feared the Lord and honored his name. On the day when I act, says the Lord, they will be my treasured possession. I will spare them just as the Father has compassion and spares his Son who serves him. And you will again see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who do not. This is the ultimate blessings of those that are in Christ Jesus. We will have the ultimate blessings of heaven, while the unrighteous will have none of heaven. You will have heaven because you are righteous before the Lord. The ultimate blessings await those who serve God faithfully until their final breath. And that is the justice of God. There is distinction between those who serve and those who do not. With everything said, my dear brethren and friends, be thankful, be grateful that you are blessed by God. Let us be mindful every day to say to God, Lord, thank you because I am blessed every day. Are you blessed? Amen. Amen. And finally, finally, you know, death is the ultimate blessing, as, all, as I always say. Death is the ultimate blessing because you need to die before you go to heaven. And now let me finally leave you with this final verse, Revelation 14, 13. And I heard the voice from heaven saying, write this down. Blessed are those who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they are blessed indeed. For they will rest from their hard work for their good deeds. Hallelujah. May God bless everybody. For those that are here and are joining us in Zoom that have not yet accepted the Lord, we encourage you to come forward. We encourage you to accept the Lord, repent of your sins, wash away your sins through baptism. Be immersed in water and wash away your sins. We want, we want you to come forward. We want, you to pray. we want to pray for you. Again, the gospel is yours. And shall we all stand as we sing the song of invitation.